put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Darkman 3, D, Darkman, D, which is of course German for Darkman 3, The Darkman, The. It's fairly repetitive. Yeah, I know, but kudos if you got the joke. The actual titles, of course, the actual subtitles, of course, Die, Dark Man, Die, which doesn't make it all that less repetitive, actually. Movie review. The movie starts the way, the only way they, these guys know how to start one of these movies, introducing the main villain for the movie, and doing so by basically building up to him being dangerous and ruthless. The new person, and I really appreciate that they did bring in someone new this time. I love Durant, but a third outing would have been a bit much. The new one is Peter Rooker, who also deals in drugs and I'm not sure what to really say about his personality. There's not much of one, but he does have this trait. He is absolutely obsessed with physical strength. Not like a gym kind of person, but yeah, he he wants to he feels that the best way to make a point is through physical strength, not guns, which is slightly confusing because he does use two guns. Yeah, not like I said, not much of a real personality. The the one trait they give him they actually do go against. There's actually one bit where he literally speaks the line if you really want to make a point, you do it with physical violence. He's just been saying that guns aren't... and then he fires a gun, too. <sighs> yeah. Anyway, he is played by Jeff Fahey, I presume it's pronounced, who I honestly barely know. I'm not sure I've seen him in much of anything other than this and Machete, but I understand he's something of a B-movie star, if you can really call it that. But yeah, he's, he's seen his share of this kind of movies, and he is certainly an enjoyable, excuse me, villain. He, he has a really great nasty smile, and yeah, he, he makes the role much more entertaining than it reads on the page. And I suppose that's about what I should say about him. Now, Dark Man has still not embraced this whole vigilante thing. And he is continuing to work on the on perfecting the synthetic skin. But a yeah, stop me if you've heard this one before. Man, I've been using that joke a lot recently, sorry. He gets another chance at perfecting the skin when he meets a fellow scientist who also specializes in that field. And that 
brings up the issue of can he, d does he feel comfortable trusting someone else? Not that there seemed to be any kind of problem with that in the second movie, but that is sort of the uh, arc, I suppose you could say, for for Darkman's character in this movie. I'm not sure there's really any thematic, but yeah, can he get close to someone again? Can he care about another person? After all, he's lost. Is or or will he just completely shut down and never have anything to do with other people again? And that covers it pretty well for the plot. This is what I'm talking about. This is how you make a sequel to Darkman, especially if you don't really have the capabilities to make it as good as the original Darkman. This is considerably more entertaining than the second movie. The second movie is kind of just passable. I'm not saying this movie is good either, but at least I suppose I should start by just, yeah, going, going into how it's different and why it's actually entertaining. For one thing, it gets that, or actually cares, that a big part of the first one was its non-stop pace. This movie, much like the first one, does not stop moving, pretty much. It, it's not entirely as fast as the first one, and there are a few things that sort of come up and nothing really comes of it, as far as these the various twists go that, of course, keep it going. And also very much doesn't overstay its welcome. It's 83 minutes, not counting the end credits, making it the shortest of the three. And the the various plot points and characters that keep the plot moving tend to be interesting enough and many of them very unexpected. There are some really great, completely out of left field twists and turns that still, you know, make sense. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure there's particularly any of them that don't basically make sense. You know, it's not it's not completely smart. It's it's B movie smart, you know. The and also the amount of action is really good. Actually there, there might be the most action in this out of any uh, out of all three of them. I think there might be more action in this than the excuse me than the first movie. And it's really quite good. It's again, of course, on a budget, but it doesn't really feel that much like it. The It also really understands sort of this aspect of the first one of the gross-out factor, of, of being really unpleasant. There is some, there's not a ton of gore in this movie, but what there is, is really good. You really flinch watching parts of this movie. The, the acting is pretty decent. There's not much, I already mentioned Fahey. Voss Lu again does a pretty good job. I'd say this is a more interesting rendition of uh, Darkman Peyton Westlake than the second movie. He has sort of more to go through in this. And other than that, there's I don't know, there's there's not many that really stand out, but on the whole it's 
it's fine at least. The effects are pretty good. There's not really anything that looked really bad or anything. This sees somewhat of a return to smart tactics by Darkman and it's really very... Something that this really gets that the second one really lacked and that the first one, because it was an origin story, couldn't spend that much time on is this is a genuine battle between the anti-hero and the villain and that is really uh, a great aspect of it. You really get into seeing what one of them will do because this is a... to, to a certain extent they are evenly matched. They are both incredibly determined and they they have resources. Darkman has the his powers, I suppose you could call them, the, the, the masks and the strength. And Rooker has a lot of men at his disposal and a good amount of money. So and and they actually go and put effort into stopping the other. It also is the first time the the two meet, and this is not a spoiler at all. I won't tell you how early it happens, but it does happen early, which is also exactly how it should be. I don't know what the second movie, why it needed to waste so much time. Well, I know why. It's because it's padded. Anyway, yeah, the the first time they meet, it actually really at least one of the two looks at the other and is like, this there's something there that I need to deal with. They they actually really see the other as the the potential threat. As also actually it it uses some of the attributes to Darkman that haven't really been used in the first two. Now... The, the visuals are, of course, still the direct-to-video level and in general, it, the scale is direct-to-video. I suppose that might more or less cover it. And... Oh, actually, dialogue. Still quite good, again, very cheesy and Hero and anti hero and villain both get great one liners. I'd say this one has less personality to a certain extent than obviously the first, and maybe to an extent also the second, but it is the more entertaining of the two sequels. It's not something you're gonna remember for very long, and yeah, it's, it's no great work, but if you watch the first one and you just want to watch at least one sequel, you can skip straight to this one, and frankly, yeah, absolutely nothing will be lost by not watching the second one. There's no real continuity. In fact, I'm not... I think that these were produced around the same time, probably like back to back, and then just released two different years so they could make more money, help explain also why Vol Vos Lu was in both, for example, and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, they like to crank out when they just have 
So it's really strange that there is almost no continuity between them and it feels like something that happens in one doesn't necessarily affect the one coming after it. But this does have some of the same problems as the second with at points Darkman is just sitting around or and and we still do see the scarred face too much, although not as anywhere near as bad as the second one. There is some really great over the top maniacal acting in this. I'm not really gonna give away exactly who or when, but it's it's quite enjoyable. There's there's some yeah. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.